Okay, so as we move forward tomorrow, okay, we'll check out your vocabulary and then your evaluation for um, this chapter again is tomorrow. We'll go over some terms, make sure we're moving in the right direction, okay? Because again, one of the things that we had said yesterday, we're on your side. We do want to see you succeed, okay? Now, whether we believe that or not, I have no control over that, okay? So with that and moving forward, okay, what did we talk about yesterday? What was our main idea? Main? That, like, chart? Yeah, and that chart was dealing with what? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and Thanks, brother. that's maybe not quite specific enough. Hydrocarbons would be the best answer, oh, yeah. okay? So octane, kerosene, okay? Diesel, lubricating oils, asphalt slash tar, all of those, okay? So as we move forward, we'll uh, look at some examples in the book just to show you where some of this content is coming from. So what has been the most difficult portion of this chapter? Most what? <laughs> difficult. Oh. Okay. So one of those things that when, if it is everything, please try to find some help, whether it's with a classmate, myself, whichever. Because as we said earlier, we are on your side. Okay, so with that, okay, <clears throat> when this is one of your vocabulary terms, polymers, so what is the definition, what, when you're talking about a polymer, what might that be, a repeating arrangement of what? Well, no, that's not quite specific enough. Okay, so look at the definition of a... For a polymer? Okay, well... Let's... Polymer. Polymer, a class of natural synthetic substances make up of many smaller or simpler molecules called monomers, arranged in large chains. So that's why that's, that's half right. Okay. So if you take a whole bunch of monomers, link them together, that makes a polymer. So one of the things I want you to ask is one of the things that's nice about biochemistry is you can make reference to zoological terms, physiological processes like digestion. So when we talk about mammals that are carnivores, okay, all right, gentlemen, that's, that's enough, please. The digestion of carnivores versus herbivores, okay? The long, long, the large intestine, what is easier to break down in your estimation, plants or meat products like if you're a carnivore? What, what would be easier to digest? Meat, meat, brother. Car carnivores or herbivores? What's easier to digest? Herbivores. Carnivores. Okay. So when they consume other substances, it's much, much easier to, for that to be broken down. Why, you might ask? Okay. Think of what is one vegetable like, like celery? Do you enjoy celery? Okay, so when you take a, a bite out of that celery, what's the number one, what do you hear? Crunch. 
because, because that is a repeating unit of glucose. It's glucose, 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 glucose. It's a whole bunch of glucose molecules put together that are monomers. So then when you start linking monomers together, what do we get? Polymers. Polymers, okay? Polymer of cellulose is really, really difficult to digest for humans. It just is. So today, Hamburgers, is that easy for us to digest? Yes. Yes. So then when you look at Friday, potato ole, the, no. no, it's not. We can, but that's made of starch compounds, which is, again, a really large polymer. So it's, it's much harder to digest plant materials than it is uh, protein-based materials. It, it just is. So that's how we try to relate some terms in biochemistry with that of physiological functions. So when it comes to carnivores, like cattle, did I say carnivores? I meant herbivores. When it comes to herbivores like cattle, do they need to eat a lot of yes. materials? Yes, because there's just not a lot of nutrition in there. That's why it's so much easier to digest protein-based materials as opposed to plant-based materials. Okay, enough of that. <clears throat> so, what can you, what can you infer from this? If the protein, okay, if the protein is the polymer, what might the monomer be from this statement here? What can you infer from that? Yeah, amino acids, exactly. <clears throat> so when we look at the extent of proteins, a question you might ask was, how can you make so many proteins if there's only 20 different amino acids? I say, well, good question. Because how many letters make up the English alphabet, you know, 26. So that doesn't put a limit on the number of words that you can that you can make. Just look at any dictionary, of course, and it's depending upon how extravagant it is. If it's a college dictionary, it might be more thick or thicker than others. But the same concept would apply. There's 20 different amino acids as opposed to 26 different letters in the alphabet that make up so many words. Okay. And one of the things that we'll talk about today, and that's why we wanted you to grab your your, uh, your books, is that you will be responsible for drawing the structures of these amino acids. Now what's nice about that is it's a repeating pattern that occurs over and over, just like that of the periodic table, okay? It's a cycle that continually repeats itself. Okay. Does everyone have this content that wants it? Yep. Okay. I want to do this one. Okay. All right. <clears throat> B 
before your time. In other words, in the mid 1990s. Okay. Does anyone know what NFL football star, former football star, passed away one week or two weeks ago? Maybe you've heard of the name O.J. Simpson. Okay. So, according to what we'd call history now, do you know what O.J. Simpson was accused of doing? Well, I don't know if Nicole, what was her? It was Ron Goldman and Nicole, Nicole Brown? Okay. So, I don't know if that was his, his wife or it was just a, if you want to call it a house guest, something to that effect. But anyway, one of the things, this is when this was really starting to maybe, let's say, pick up traction in, in about the mid-1990s. It was still new to um, forensic science. But did O.J. Simpson get acquitted or found guilty of charges? He was acquitted. Okay. Now, uh, he, he was found guilty of some other, uh, I don't, I think it was illegal gambling, I think. But anyway, since this was so brand new, he was still acquitted and had to do with the, the glove, the, the defense attorney, I think. It was a common phrase, and maybe Mrs. Herbert, something about the, if the glove don't fit, you got to acquit. So... The glove that had Nicole Brown's, was it? Had the blood on this glove. So they could match the glove from the crime scene to what was on the glove. Same match. It was a DNA match for the victims. But what had happened was they did a demonstration. Oh, the glove don't fit. It's not his glove. And that's where that phrase comes from. If the glove doesn't, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Okay, tear down, please. Okay, and then is this unique to each individual? Do you two have the same DNA? No, no you don't. Do you two have the same DNA? No. And you could look at you two, you two, anywhere throughout the class. Your DNA is going to be different. Now. Would there be some similarities between yourself and Jackson? Yes. Yeah. Yes, your brother. Yeah. Okay. So within family members, of course, there would be similarities. Why would that be? You get the DNA from your parents. That's why. That's why it would be the same. Okay. One more, and then we're going to look at your book here in just a moment. Hopefully I hit record. I did. That would be the next thing. Okay, does everyone have this content that wants it? So, in short, if we were to ask you, what does DNA mean? Well, for one, you could just look at what we had. 
Or you could look in the glossary. What is the definition of DNA? Well, it's deoxyribonucleic acid, but no one really refers to that as deoxyribonucleic acid. They just want to say DNA instead. Right. On the cells, encodes, and stores genetic information. In other words, it tells the cell what to do. Okay. All right. So what we want you to do now is go ahead and look at or around page 724. Okay, it's talking about biological compounds. Okay, 724, so just follow along, please. <clears throat> biological polymers. Like all polymers, biological polymers are the huge molecules made of many monomers linked together. We already established that. It's glucose molecules linking together to form compounds like starch. It's a repeating monomer to make a polymer, okay? The large polymers are usually larger and more complex in structure than those that make up plastics, okay? Many of the important biological compounds in your body are polymers. Among them are proteins and starches. So we talked about both of those today. Proteins are large organic polymers formed from organic monomers called amino acids. Even though as we wrote down earlier, how many different amino acids exist? 20, okay? And are found in nature. They can be arranged in many different ways that millions of different proteins exist. Proteins come in numerous forms and make up many of the uses in your body, such as muscles, tendons, hair, and fingernails. In fact, proteins account for 15% of your body weight. That's what we had wrote down earlier, okay? Protein formation, amino acids like glycine and cytosine are the monomers that combine to form proteins, okay? Shown in figure 22, in other words, right below there. The amino group NH2 and one amino acid combined with the carboxylic acid group COOH of another <clears throat> amino acid forming a compound called a peptide. Now that's something that we're not going to illustrate, okay? We're not going to do peptide formation. We're just going to have you look at the different types of amino acids. So, what is the first one that is listed on page 724? What is it called? It's in the lower left-hand corner. It's called glycine. Okay. So, what we just read, okay, I just do this by habit. What type of group is that called? We just read it. No. What type of group is this? We just read it. No. That's the whole compound. See, this, this is part of the problem that some of you may have. I'm not saying everybody. Okay. NH2. But what is that called? What type of group? Yeah, it's called an amino group. Okay. Then, when you link that to a carbon, here's another hydrogen. And then, what does COOH mean to you? Acid. That is an acid. So C, O, O, and H. So, what is... This is not quite complete yet. How do we make this the amino acid glycine? Exactly. There's only one spot where that can go. So there's a lot of inorganic chemistry that goes along with this, okay? Because what column is nitrogen in? Not the sixth. 
the fifth one, okay? So that means nitrogen has how many valence electrons? It's got five valence electrons. There's two. That's why we put those two there. Here's three, four, and five, okay? So then what column is hydrogen in? So that's how many valence electrons. So then we could do triangles. This is just a review of things that we've learned. We're showing a bond has formed. What column is carbon in? What column is carbon in? The fourth column. Okay. One, two, three, and then four. And then, as you had correctly illustrated, we're missing what atom? You said it. Another hydrogen. Okay? So we'll just put a dot there to form a bond. And we do the same thing here. Okay? Notice we don't illustrate it that way. We're just reviewing uh, some of the things that we learned this semester. Okay? Chair down, please. Thank you. So now we have correctly identified glycine, okay? <clears throat> With any amino acid, which there's 20 of them, we said there's a repeating pattern that occurs with these amino acids. So what can you infer? I think that's too tough of a question. Because this is what the book illustrates. Okay. But what we could do is put and make the, the molecule, um, was it cysteine, was it? Yes. Okay. You could put a carbon atom down here. So that would now be cysteine, okay? So the reason we're including this is because this is what the author puts in. And one of the aspects, how we explain this to upper level students. Okay, that's right. E-I-N-E. Okay, is one of the things that you may have, that's fine, I'll pick it up. I, I'm the one that left it there, okay. Well, thank you for picking that up, okay. Is, I don't know, I think Leonardo painted this chapel. It's a really extravagant painting. It's in a chapel. C. Mm -hmm. The Sistine Chapel. Okay? So, one of the things, do we know what the Sistine Chapel illustrates? You okay? Okay. What does the Sistine Chapel illustrate? I think, isn't it? Adam and what we perceive as Adam and Eve. I don't know if it was Adam and Eve. Chair down, please. Okay. Isn't a picture of what we consider God putting his finger out and then Adam's on the other end? I think that's what it is. Okay. But that's just what I think. But if you were there viewing that, this is how we try to explain it. Go. Reviewing the Sistine Chapel. Okay? So, the reason we say that is, okay, what can you presume that this sulfur is connecting to? There's nothing written here, but there's a dash. Right. 
So then when we say that, we say, shh, we're viewing the Sistine Chapel. Yeah, so it just means quiet saying, shh. Just be respectful of everybody else. Correct? Okay. So then other amino acids that we want you to know, is there a repeating pattern here? Is there a repeating pattern here? There is. Okay. So we can color code this. Okay. Is this the same between the two amino acids? Okay. I think this marker's about had it. Okay. Is this the same between the two amino acids? It is. So whatever you see in the box, it's a repeating pattern. It's this is where these amino acids differ, or they differentiate themselves. Okay? Then there's two more that we want you to be responsible for. Okay? Okay? That is also a specific amino acid. Okay? So I'm just thinking, I, and I truly hope that we get this content. Okay? I, I, I really do. How many of you are choosing to write this down? It's a choice. I'm just asking. If you're not, that's, that's your choice. Okay? So now, this is a different amino acid. Can you read that? It says alanine. I think this marker's about had it. Okay? Okay, and we're going to just do one more amino acid. Because remember, whatever amino acid that you write, whatever amino acid you write, whatever is inside these boxes, it's the same. It's what you see here in the middle is where it's different. Okay, so this is the fourth type of amino acid. And this is what we call valine. I said valine. Okay. <coughs> Okay. So again, what do all amino acids have in common? We've probably said it four times now. Everything that's inside the box is the same. This is called what type of a group? NH2. Again, we read it earlier and we pointed it out. What are these specifically called? No. These are called amino acids, which means this is an amino group. And COOH is what type of group? Acids. So that's why we call these amino acids, because they differ here in the middle. But what they all have in common is an amino group and an acid group. Okay? So what we want to look at now okay. 
Okay. When we talk about any type of compound that only has carbon and hydrogen, could be methane, could be octane, any type of compound that is composed only of carbon and hydrogen, what would that be called? Because it's one of your vocab terms. Hydrocarbon, yeah, hydrogen, carbon, hydrocarbon. Okay. Okay. What happens when, for instance, if we're talking about a hydrocarbon and hydrogen atoms are replaced? What is that type of a compound? When we had described it as if a staff member is gone. A substituted hydrocarbon, staff member's gone, a substitute comes in and takes their place. Okay? So, what is it that stores genetic information? We talked about that today. Di. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate the effort. Deoxyribonucleic acid, but no one's going to write that out. We refer to it as what instead? DNA. DNA. Okay. So what might have pleasant odors and also contains a benzene ring? That's what these, the general chemistry students are responsible for these. Those are called aromatics. Okay. Is anybody sitting out there thinking, I have no idea what's going on right now? And... If so, I would be led to believe that your vocabulary is not completed then. So we're just trying to help point you into the right, right direction. Okay. So we have a few minutes left. It's your time to ask any questions about anything that we've talked about today. These are your vocabulary terms, anything to that nature. Yes. Oh, I just, the reason I'm erasing that is because I don't want you to write valine, valine down for this other one. They had described it as alanine. Okay, now we've got alanine. Okay, that's why we erase those. Okay, so for right now, remember, vocabs due tomorrow, so we'll catch up to you next time.